Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a few tips and hacks for first-time mums especially. Some of them are quite basic. It may seem as if it's really, really simple, but it is truly, truly useful. I've learned a lot of things along the way. Um, I have a five-month-old baby now. It's not been a very long time, but I've learned a lot along the way already. So I wanted to share some of those hacks and tips with you today. Tip number one is to use a lint ruler to remove baby hairs from bed sheets. Now, newborn babies lose quite a lot of hair. It's their baby hair, so for the first, almost first one year of their life, they will lose quite a lot of hair. And all of these hair will be gathered on the bed sheets, not anywhere else. And it's next to impossible, or rather it's impractical, to remove each and every one of those hairs individually from the bed sheet and there isn't any other way easier than a lint remover. Just use a clean sheet on your lint remover and roll it across on the bed sheet and it'll pick up most of the hair if not everything and whatever is left on there you can then pick out a few more by hand. Tip number two is about changing nappies. There are several sub points under this tip. First and foremost, have several changing stations all around your house. Now this is really basic, every single person will talk about this, but what I'm trying to tell you is, even if you live in a single floor, a two bedroom flat like I do, it is important to have multiple different changing stations along the house. This room that I'm standing in is part office and part nursery so my changing table and all of my changing things and baby clothes and everything is in this room and i've also got a changing station in my master bedroom now because it is part office sometimes my husband is working from home he has some sort of an emergency call or meeting at that time i can't come into this room to change his nappy i need to be able to change his nappy somewhere else in the house that's why it's so important to have a different changing station in different parts of the house when you need to change your baby's nappy make sure you have have another nappy ready at hand not just taken out from its bag or your changing station itself but make sure you untuck all of those things in your nappy as in you know pull it out from its attachment from its folds and then pull out the side tabs and everything ready to go literally so as soon as you remove the soiled nappy put on the other nappy as soon as possible to avoid any accidents especially when you have baby boys and also once you've put on the nappies make sure you pull out all of the frills you need to tuck those out that is the cost 90 percent of the time for any accidents or any leakages from the nappies you have to make sure that you pull out the frills from both sides otherwise it will be very easy for any sort of leakage whether it's pee or whether it's a soil nappy and the last tip about changing nappy is if you were to have baby boys now if you have baby boys you know changing nappy is like a ticking time bomb you never know when they're going to pee and you never know if you're going to have an accident or not so it's always good to be prepared before anything happens Happens. I use this thing called a TPPP. Now this is something that you would use once you open the nappy you use that to cover your baby so that if they were to pee it doesn't get all over the place. You don't have a fountain everywhere. You don't have pee on your face, on your hands, on your walls, on their faces, on their bodies. So you have this covered. It doesn't really collect all of the pee. It just protects it from blasting everywhere basically. That's all it is. That's one thing that you could use or if you're a little bit more experienced, what you can do is when you open their nappy to change it, give it about 10 seconds. You don't really have to count 10 seconds, okay? Just give it about 5 to 10 seconds and then close the nappy again. The reason being, once it hits a bit of fresh air, it then triggers a little bit more for them to pee. So close it after 10 seconds or so, give them a minute or two to pee and then you can change the nappy and then you can open it and you can change it so you know for a fact that they've already emptied their bladder and they don't have anything else to pee while you're changing your nappy um, their nappy not your nappy and also the final thing about this is to use a wet wipe and wipe it around their belly button or just below their belly button while you have the nappy still secure by the way so this will then trigger them to pee give it a few minutes after after that another minute or so and then you can change the nappy so these two tricks will ensure that they've peed while they still have the nappy and then you're free to change the nappy without any worry or concern tip number three is about
a car seat organizers. If you haven't got this in your car seat, this is a game changer, I tell you. I only realized that I needed a car seat organizer when we had a trip to Oxford. I have a vlog about it and I'll link that up for you. Now with this trip, it was our very first trip out with Levi for more than 10 minutes in the car and we were trialing uh, road trips with him so that we know he's fine when we have to travel back to Glasgow at some point in the near future when we are able to. During this trip, I realized that I badly needed an organizer. I was sat at the back of the car and I didn't have any place to put anything. I had my phone lying about here and there. It fell between the crooks in my seat and I couldn't find it. And I was eating in the car. I didn't know where to put, you know, the wrappers and stuff. I didn't know where to put a water bottle. I was also playing with Levi and I had a few toys that I wanted to put away. I didn't have any space, but to put everything in the car seat. What else did I do? I think I, I had like spare clothes and spare cloths and you know um, wet wipes and everything lying about and I had to stuff it in his changing bag each and every time I took it out. I didn't have any place easy to access. So I then came back home and I did my research and I found a car seat organizer and I've put that for both the car seats. I don't use it so much. It's not full yet because we don't need to fill it up yet, but it's something that will grow as and when you need to. At the moment, I've only got an umbrella in there. I've got wet wipes and antibacterial wipes. I have an extra long phone charger in there. I've got a compartment to put my phone. You can also put an iPad and the screen on it will allow you to use your iPad so it is basically touchscreen friendly. I've already tested it out. You can put a few extra bits and pieces that you want. I've also got a roll of sandwich bags to use it as my bin so when I need to empty something, when I need to throw things away, I put it in here and then I take it away with me when I leave the car. I don't need to carry so many things in my hand and juggle everything when I get down from the car and get into the house. Tip number four is to leave a fully stocked nappy bag in your car itself. When you need to leave the house in a hurry, which is going to be almost all the time once you have a baby, this will be really, really handy. When you go out with your baby, you need so many things. You need spare clothes, you need spare nappies, you need wet wipes, you need antibacterial wipes, hand sanitizers, you need cream and lotion and um, muslin cloths and a lot of other things, water bottle, food, maybe snacks for you. So there are so many things that you need. And when you're rushing to leave home, you can't be thinking about each one individually and picking it individually. Even if you have a nappy bag in the house, sometimes you need to restock it. And if you haven't done it, you will be then caught short. So if you already have a changing bag in the car, all you need to do is get ready, pick your baby up, leave the house. That's it, as simple as that. Unless the weather is super hot, you are safe to keep your changing bag in the car and all of your things in it is always safe. Tip number five is about organizing baby clothes. I've got two sub points under this. Rule number one, when you're folding baby clothes, do not fold it. Just roll up your baby clothes. It is impractical to fold baby clothes and it doesn't make sense at all. It's so teeny tiny and there's really no point in folding baby clothes or doing Marie Kondo style or whatever it is. Roll up all of your baby clothes like bodysuits and vests and you know um, pants or whatever else you have and it's easier to look at it that way. And rule number two following this, label every single thing. You can't get to the clothes all the time. You need someone else to be doing that for you also. You know, whether you are taking the clothes out or whether you're putting the clothes back in after laundry, after folding, your partner will be doing it, Your anyone else in your household, if you have someone else in that household, will be doing that also. So when you label it, you know that everyone will be able to find whatever they need at the right place and they will be able to put everything back at the right place also. Tip number six is about bathroom organization. Somehow when you have a baby, you accumulate a lot of things. Even if you want to be a minimalistic, you still need to buy a few extra things for your baby. You know how we have organizational methods for our own skincare, makeup and shower cream and whatnot that you need to use in the bathroom. So you need um, some sort of an organization for your baby. You need like places to put toiletries and place to put extra stuff and toys especially to dry toys. You don't want any of the toys being in water and molding and getting dirty. You need to make sure that everything is hung up, everything is in a place where it can dry easily. So it'll be good to have extra racks or extra shelves or hooks 
to hang everything up in one place so that you can find it and you'll be able to put everything back in its place once you've used it and it's easy to take it out when you need to use it also. Tip number seven which is the final tip in this video is about putting all of their toys in one place. Even if you have a separate nursery for the baby, when you have a newborn baby they're not going to be using a lot of toys in different places especially in their crib in their nursery. They cannot have any toys in their crib at all so it's impractical to have anything in their nursery and if you have all of their toys in one place it's easier when you have your baby to play you can find everything one by one take it play it with them put it back in the same place and it's all forgotten so you don't have things you're not stepping over baby toys all over the place and you're not spending the rest of your free time putting away toys after your baby has gone to sleep you can gather everything in one place shove everything in a basket that's the easiest basically shove everything in a basket and then pick it up they don't have so much at all in the first three months especially so you don't need a whole new shelf you don't need to arrange everything and you know display everything for them to pick everything themselves maybe when they grow older you could do all of those things but for newborn don't even bother about displaying all of their toys so those are the hacks that I have for you today I hope you found all of these things useful if this is your first time watching any of my videos I hope you liked it and I hope you would consider subscribing I upload every week and I upload videos about motherhood about you know hacks like today's video and tips and tricks of things that I've learned and basically videos to add value to you as I do to myself. I will see you again in the next one. Bye!